Hello, colleagues. My series on successful orthodontic treatment continues with treatments for missing tooth buds, hypodontia of the upper lateral incisors followed up eight years after treatment. It is very important not only how we finish orthodontic treatment, but also what happens during the retention period. Hypodontia is a very common problem in orthodontic practice. Third molars are most often missing in the population, followed by lower second premolars and upper lateral incisors. In modern orthodontics, there is a trend to close spaces from missing teeth with the patient's own teeth. The reason for this is that in the long term, decades ahead, natural roots are always better than any form of prosthetic replacement. We must always strive to avoid prosthetics in the frontal zone mainly for aesthetic reasons, because with the vertical growth of the alveolar bone, which continues for many years after the age of 20, some authors believe throughout life, if implants are placed in the front, there is a risk that they will remain more gingival than the neighboring teeth over time, requiring replacement with more elongated crowns. Another reason is the exposure of the implant under the gingiva, which often develops after years due to the thinning of the vestibular corticalis. Of course, the discovery of teeth in a smile is the factor that should be leading for the final decision for prosthetics in the front, as well as the accompanying deformation. Let's see what changes such a treatment can bring about in eliminating the need for prosthetics. Enjoy watching. The patient came to me in 2012 at the age of 14 after the growth spurt. Externally, we see a convex profile with a lower jaw positioned further back. The face is symmetrical with proportional facial levels. Intraorally, significant orthodontic problems are observed. The upper canines have erupted medially in the place of missing lateral incisors, and the partially medialized upper premolars are also visible. The upper right baby canine is in the mouth, there is some crowding in the lower dental arch. There is deep overbite and pronounced distal occlusion with deviation to the right due to the crossbite of the right molars and the buccal occlusion of 24 with 34. X-rays confirm the main problem, namely the absence of the germs of the upper lateral incisors. The good news, however, is that there are germs of the upper wisdom teeth. On the CEF, we observe a serious skeletal class 2 problem with an ANB angle of 6 degrees and WITTZ of 5 millimeters. It is a weak hypodivergent growth pattern. The upper incisors are retroclined to 90 degrees, and the lower incisors are in proclination. This allows for contact of the incisors through dental compensation of the skeletal class 2. There is a depression at the base of the second, third, and fourth cervical vertebrae, indicating that we are in the penultimate stage or have passed the peak of growth. In the absence of upper laterals, the presence of upper wisdom tooth buds, and the manifestation of class 2 skeletal malocclusion, I have decided that it is best to close the spaces with the patient's own teeth. Moreover, it is not reasonable to condemn a 14-year-old child to prosthesis for their entire life. However, with this decision, several problems arise, the main one being how to maintain the inclination of the upper incisors and even to guide them to their normal position during the medialization of the molars so that the lips do not become too protruded in the profile, without using microimplants, the year is 2012 and they were just beginning to be used. And how to free up the growth of the lower jaw to express the chin in the profile with the remaining growth. Before we examine the clinical development of the case, let me draw your attention to several publications that underpin the evidence-based decision to avoid prosthetics in the front. One. Bjork and others have shown that vertical growth continues for at least 60 years and that when an implant is placed in the anterior region, it is lower in height than the adjacent teeth. If prosthetics in the front are to be performed, it is best to do so after the age of 25 thirtieths, according to the study by Schwartz Arad and Bichacho from 2015, when the rate of vertical tooth alveolar growth decreases from 1.02% per year to 0.27% per year. 2. In cases of hypodontia of the upper lateral incisors, the canines will be in the place of the laterals, and the premolars will be like canines. Marco Rosa has proven that premolars can serve as canines without risk of overloading or problems in the temporomandibular joints. 
The choice of the bracket for replacing the lateral incisor with the canine is crucial to achieve maximum positive crown torque, which helps to bury the root in the bone and make the canine more prominent. The crown of the canine can be reshaped with enameloplasty, composite, or both. Choosing the right brackets also aims to hide the palatine tubercle of the first premolar and complete the treatment with a class II malocclusion of the molars. For maximum aesthetics, the level of the gingiva at the front teeth should also be considered. To hide the root of the canine under the gingiva that will replace the missing lateral incisor, Neil Kravitz recommends choosing one of the following options for bracket of the canine, 1, an upper incisor bracket with plus 17 degrees of torque, 2, a lateral upper incisor bracket with plus 10 torque. In both cases, enameloplasty must be performed on the vestibular surface of the canine to allow the bracket to fit nicely. Option 3 is to reverse the bracket on the canine and go from minus 7 torque to plus 7 degrees with the hook facing down. The last option, option 4, with the strongest torque, is to use a bracket on the lower premolar on the opposite side with the hook facing occlusally. To hide the palatine cusp of the premolar, the bracket should be attached distally to perform a mesiopalatal rotation. For the first molars, a tube from the lower opposing molar can be used to achieve a slight mesiopalatal rotation and take up some space in the upper arch. Treatment begins with the extraction of the temporary canine and bonding of the upper brackets. The goal is to quickly move the upper front teeth and release the lower jaw to show its growth potential. To maintain the incline of the incisors during medialization of the lateral teeth, it would be helpful to use a bidimensional technique with 018 slot brackets on the front teeth and 022 on the lateral teeth. Thus, a 017-025 steel arch wire will hold the incline of the front teeth tightly and the lateral teeth will have a greater distance from the slot walls, reducing friction during medialization. When bonding the brackets, it is important to plan the level of the gingiva at the end of the treatment and whether the premolars will be intruded and reshaped as canines to achieve an open bite in that area. We will not have prosthetic restorations in this case but instead performing enameloplasty on the canine at the tip of the tubercle and palatal surfaces to make it flatter. We will also composite buildup of the medial surface to resemble a lateral incisor. After three months, the upper arch will be a 017-025 thermally activated wire. I will use the front teeth as an anchorage and create a vestibular medialized force with a power chain attached to 24, helping to rotate and correct the buccal occlusion. Separators will also be placed on the lower teeth. After three days, the lower brackets will be attached, but there is a risk of contact with the upper teeth, so they will be placed more gingivally. After leveling the lower arch, we want to retract the lower incisors to their normal inclination with elastic power chains. After six months, we will switch to stainless steel 017-25 wires, Crisscross elastic solved the crossbite of tooth 17 and 47. Correcting the crossbite releases the lower jaw, and with the help of class 2 elastics, it is brought forward, correcting the deviation. I need to address the deep bite and place turbos behind the upper central incisors. Since it is a hypodivergent type, I want to extrude the posterior teeth to correct the deep bite, using vertical elastics. These elastics are designed for maximum wear, even with a third-class force component, to help medialize the upper lateral teeth. After another three months, the deep bite is corrected, and the spaces in the upper arch are closing. The buckle and cross bite are also fully corrected. We need to achieve posterior settling. After another month, settling has been achieved. I am replacing the upper arch with 019-25 stainless steel to better maintain the torque on the upper front teeth, there is also a reversed curve of speed in the arch wire. I am continuing with the power chains in the upper jaw. After another month, mandatory control impressions and OPG will be taken along with these photos for evaluation of the result and consideration of the final steps in the treatment. You can see on the ortho how much the lateral teeth are medialized, their roots are parallel, and most importantly, the medialization has been nearly translation without leaving behind their roots. Only the upper left canine needs to upright. 
There is still some space behind the right canine and a discrepancy in the upper and lower midlines. 24 is an infraclusion, and the upper front teeth still need more positive coronal torque. One year and two months after starting, the overbite has been normalized with the help of bite turbos, which I am now removing because their contact does not allow for the expression of the positive coronal torque, which I will incorporate into the arch. In these photos, after three months, you can see that the bending of the arch wire to upright the root of the upper left canine, which is slightly extruded and the premolar is in contact with the antagonist. The braces are scheduled to be removed. The braces will be removed after one and a half years of treatment at the age of 15 and a half, closing the space from the missing teeth with his own teeth. We will see how his maturation affects his profile. The face is symmetrical and the convexity of the profile is reduced due to residual growth. We have achieved a wonderful occlusion in all planes of space. The canines were built mesially with composite and the enamel was removed from their tips. I put fixed retainers on all my patients, the lower ones extending to the premolars. I also require a removable upper retainer, a vacuum formed retainer that covers the most distal teeth to keep them in place. This eliminates the probability of opening spaces at the site of hypodontia. They are worn only at night. The hypertrophy of the gingiva will subside within two months. The lower jaw is significantly more forward by more than two degrees. The upper incisors have improved by 10 degrees in inclination, mainly with palatal root movement which may play a role in reduction of the ANB angle. The lower incisors have been retracted to a normal inclination. The interincisal angle is close to normal, which is a prerequisite for the overbite not to deepen over time, as I explained in the videos about deep bite. The patient is at the end of his growth and there is no vertical change in his facial height, as seen from the cervical vertebrae. In fact, the superimposition of the final ceph with the initial one clearly shows how much the molars with anchorage only in the front teeth have been medialized. The incisors are even better aligned. The growth of the lower jaw is visible, which was released with the correction of the inclination of the incisors and the crossbite, and how the profile has been significantly improved. Superimposition is the place where we can visually assess what we have achieved with the treatment. Here it is 1.5 years after the braces were removed. The boy has matured, as he already sleeps through two nights with the appliance. There is a beautiful occlusion in all planes despite the absence of two upper laterals and their replacement with canines. The crowns are in excellent condition. The gingival margins of the central upper incisors and canines are wonderful, but the level of the gingival margin of the premolars is considerably below ideal. This is because the decision was made not to prosthetize them as canines and the treatment was maximally conservative. In the posterior segments, we have medialized upper lateral teeth up to a therapeutic class 2. The slight mediopalatal rotation of the first upper molars, which is targeted in these cases and takes up space in the arch, helps with this. He is now 23 years old, or almost 8 years after the treatment, with a wonderful profile and nasolabial angle with the descent of the tip of the nose with maturation. In the smile, the substitution of the canines is evident only by the more yellow color of the canines, which can be easily corrected. This is the intraoral situation almost eight years after the end of treatment. The upper retainer is torn to the right of the premolar. The occlusion is stable, but there is slight recession on tooth 41 due to suboptimal hygiene in the lower frontal area and pressure from the lower wisdom teeth, causing tooth 41 to come into contact with the upper incisor, which is something that can be expected with a fixed lower front with a retainer that has been medialized completely, with a risk of traumatic contact in the frontal area and recession. I took a follow-up x-ray for the lower wisdom teeth and recommended their extraction to avoid pressure on the lower dental arch and to equalize the number of teeth in the upper and lower arches. The most important thing for stability after closing such large spaces is for the movement to be bodily, even with overcorrection of the root, which should be slightly more medial than the crown. This guarantees that there will be no opening of the spaces from missing teeth. 
At the beginning, end, and almost eight years later, the comparison of this slide clearly shows the normalization of the inclination of the incisors and the medialization of the upper molars, as well as the correction of the deep bite and deviation. On the profile, the maturation of the soft tissues is clearly visible, and how the chip on the nose with the increased nasolabial angle has normalized. The development of the chin with its sharp growth is also visible. My message to you with this video is that it is best for patients not to have prosthetic treatment for hypodontia, and we must do everything possible for this, even though it is difficult, especially in the visible frontal zone. The second most important thing is that there are classic tools that have been proven effective for decades and that are very effective in planning solutions for various orthodontic problems. In this case, microimplants will probably be useful, but it is possible to do without them. The most modern technique we have purchased and want to apply to our patients is not always the best for them. Our patients do not deserve overtreatment with invasive procedures that they do not even need. Let us remember that we have taken the Hippocratic Oath and Primum Non Nocera, not to harm and to be guided by the patient's best interests. Thank you for your attention, and see you in the next episode of this series.